elected for presidents Ronald Reagan and George H.W. Bush, Robert Charles, along with Foundation for Defense of Democracy's founder, Cliff May. Gentlemen, thanks for being with us on The Bottom Line. Cliff, I'm going to come to you first. Uh, Dagan and I both believe the, the past sanctions haven't worked. We're not too confident in these sanctions, but what say you? Yeah, the past sanctions haven't worked. We know the Russian economy actually has been growing much faster than anyone expected. According, that's according to the International Monetary Fund. That's not just my idea. The new sanctions, there's a lot of them. Uh, they're kind of like 500 slaps on the wrist. And I would say that slaps, uh, that's not the way you win a fight. I just asked Mike Tyson, George Frazier, or Muhammad Ali, you have to deliver a right hook. That's not what the, these are. There are ways, and I hope we'll talk about them, that Biden could put pressure on Putin, could punish him for the killing of, 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 uh, of Zalav, Nazalny, but he has not done so, and he's not doing, having an impact on the war. Robert, what would be the first thing that you would do to try and uh, starve Putin and Russia of money? Because what has happened, I, I was speaking to someone about it today, and they said to damage Russia's ability to wage war, you do everything absolutely possible to drive down the price of oil and natural gas. And Biden Incorporated has done the exact opposite. Well, there is a good point by itself, which is we could start up our own oil and gas production, which we've shut down to a large extent. We actually import from a lot of other countries, and, uh, and we even get Russian oil through the Bahamas, unbelievably. But I would say there are three or four things, and I think Cliff May is correct. There are three or four things that you could do that would be effective. These are not going to be effective sanctions. And obviously, with Navalny's killing uh, and what's going on in Ukraine, anything that they've done to date is really slaps on the wrist. They're really uh, of no real value, whatever. So what could you do? Uh, the top trading partners, the top seven trading partners with Russia, after China, in order, are the United States, Germany, Italy, France, South Korea, Japan, and Turkey. You could immediately put a coalition together to cut off key pieces of trade that would hurt Russia and do it in a way that was convincing that would deter them from future actions. You could also take the $300 billion that Putin has in Western banks and you could seize it. You could also seize the yachts and all these other vehicles and, 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 and money pockets that belong to all his oligarch friends all over the United States and in Europe, and you could seize them. Remember, Europe, uh, if you take it all together, does 37% uh, of the trade that Russia that Russia has, and, you could, so, and we do about 10% with them, so we could put those together. Final thing is the international court. Now, its jurisdiction is limited and it has arrested him, but you know, you could move on some of that in an innovative way way that we haven't done. And so the bottom line is Biden is either inept uh, or indifferent or just doesn't want to do what needs to be done. All uh, bad solutions or, or uh, ideas for Biden. But let's, wanna, let's talk about this because it looks like the media elite just, they can't s seem to give up on their insane Trump-Russia collusion theories. Watch this. Donald Trump surrendered a long time ago to Vladimir Putin. There's a growing pro-Putin faction. Yeah. yeah in the Republican Party, and it's led by Donald Trump. Uh, Donald Trump dictated to Mike Johnson and the GOP that they should not accept aid going to Ukraine. We know that uh, Vladimir Putin didn't want that. You wonder, what does Putin have on Donald Trump that he always has to be beholden to him, his mm -hmm. buddy? his buddy in vileness. It is just simply evidence that the Republicans are willing to be used as assets of Russian intelligence, just like Donald Trump was in 2016. Donald Trump Tulsi Gabbard would literally be Vladimir Putin's dream ticket. So Cliff, I want to come to you first. Here's my concern. And we all saw this play out over three years after Donald Trump won in 2016. It was fake. It was false. It was election interference, but they did it anyway. But they were able to get the uh, American intelligence community involved in Donald Trump and, and surveilling him. I don't believe this is about politics right now. I think Democrats are doing this to get the intelligence community, community back involved in Donald Trump and Republicans' campaigns. What say you? Well, I think it's obviously nonsense. I mean, Nancy Pelosi says that the Russians have something on Trump. What? Trump is not easy, an easy guy to embarrass. I think we absolutely know that. And so I, I doubt that's the case. Can I just add one other thing? I think the idea of the 300 billion foreign reserves that we could seize, that's right. But how about then use that as reparations, give that 300 billion dollars 
to the Ukrainians so they can buy the weapons they need. Biden also could give certain weapons like attackums, which would have an impact on the war right now. He'd give maybe up to a dozen of them. And then Biden also doesn't want to export liquefied natu natural gas. That's a terrible mistake. The Europeans need that. You don't want to push the Europeans back into the arms of Russia, buying energy again. So he should, he should take back that decision, and we should export natural gas, make money, give ind energy independence to the Europeans. All that would hurt Putin and hurt his war against the Ukrainians who want to degrade Russians military and do it as a and, and it's a service to the US that they do because Putin is in league with Xi Jinping in China and with Ali Khamenei in Tehran with the North Koreans with the Venezuelans and with with the, with the Cubans that's the axis of evil that we now confront well and Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates the UAE had Putin in December uh, and had a parade for him. So that's one, the two places he's been uh, sending his oil and distillates. Uh, Robert Charles, final word to you. Yeah, I, look, uh, why do they uh, pick a crazy issue to tag on Trump? Because they've got nothing to run on. I mean, they, there's no Biden policy that any American feels great about. So uh, might as well just drag up the old idea and put it out there. And I think it's rather rich to hear a guy that's taken a hell of a lot of money from China and Ukraine and Romania saying that his opponent uh, is somehow uh, uh, in cahoots with somebody that uh, obviously is is an adversary. So I think it's just it's it's a it's a clear indication of how desperate they are. And, and I think no what doubt. we're going to see in the months ahead. It's called the death of shame. Robert and Cliff, thanks for being with us. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Of course.